Yes, we've got a nice shiny new branding now that we're announcing the first two cores uh, we announced yesterday, the uh, PowerVR Series 6 cores. The first two members of the family are the G6200 and the G6400. Uh, the key thing about Series 6 is where Whereas in Series 5 we talked about execution pipelines, here we're talking about execution clusters where each cluster is an array of processing elements. So the whole architecture has been upgraded to a whole new level. Uh, what that means is that the PowerVR Series 6 range uh, using the Rogue architecture, which is how we're you now referring to the Rogue cores, any Rogue core means it uses the Rogue architecture, uh, is now in a whole new level of, of uh, efficiency and performance. That means that Rogue cores are starting at, we think, around about 100 gigaflops and moving up into the teraflop range, and that's at mobile power consumption levels. And another key component that we added within the Rogue architecture is lossless compression. So really taking that to a next level in terms of bandwidth usage is very important because you cannot keep pushing more and more pixels within the system. So today in tablets we're talking about resolutions that are bigger than the mainstream HDTVs that we have today. That is a lot of extra bandwidth, a lot of extra data you need to push around in the system. Um, if you look at the number of pixels you've got there, you have about 2 megapixels in a 1080p image. At 32-bit color, that's 8 megabytes of data for a single frame. You have to load information in, write it to the frame buffer, and then send it back to the screen. That's 24 megabytes of data flow, very simplistically estimated, that you need to do. If you want to sustain that at 60 frames per second, we're talking about gigabytes of data going through the system. So if you can add a lossless compression, you maintain all the API compatibility, but you reduce that bandwidth usage very significantly. So if we assume a 50% compression, bringing that down to only a fraction of that is really going to give you big benefits in terms of sustaining all that higher performance, but also to enable those higher display resolutions. What's the beauty of it being PowerVR is there's full compatibility, being able to move applications very easily from Series 5 to Series 6. That's one of the benefits of following through the family. Uh, but you could, with that processing power opens up a whole new area. Whereas Series 5 is primarily designed for uh, graphics and OpenGL ES2 is really its, its, its big thing. Uh, with Series 6 it'll support OpenGL ES Hulti, uh, which is the next generation of OpenGL ES API. It'll support full, all the cores will support full DirectX 10, some of the members of will also support full DirectX 11. Um, but uh, the thing is that Series 6 was designed, in addition to being an excellent graphics engine, also uh, it's optimized for GPU compute. So the whole OpenCL experience, whilst it runs amazingly well, and we've got some tremendous demonstrations here at CES on what we can achieve with OpenCL on Series 5 cores, uh, with Series 6 uh, you've got a very, very rich parallel computing experience which enables you to really use those g hundreds of gigaflops uh, in any mix you, you, you wish between uh, graphics and GPU compute applications. And that's opening up whole new areas of application areas for GPUs uh, beyond the core graphics functionality, which of course is still going to be best in class. In terms of efficiency, what is really important in the market now is looking at power consumption. So we need to look really carefully at the architectural design and refine it from a power consumption point of view. And that means we've looked at elements such as uh, compute, and rather than using a simple pipeline approach or blind multi-core approaches, we've gone for a multi-cluster approach to compute. And that allows us to scale the design much more efficiently and avoid that we uh, basically copy a lot of overhead logic within a design. If you look at multi-core, you're basically copying a whole core instantiation. And if you want to make the equivalent of that to the PC market, that would mean putting two whole graphics cores within your PC. And that's a lot of overhead and a lot of cost that you're putting down as well as power consumption. By doing multi-cluster you're more looking at the actual compute engines within your graphics core itself and increasing that number. So obviously that allows you to do much more efficient scaling of performance without having to duplicate or even more all the different units that you have within the design. And that is very much driven from that power requirement because if we now look at the new SOCs you're getting better and better silicon technology but that means you have more more and more active logic within ever smaller spaces and that means hotspots really become an issue so 
Having efficiency on the power side is very important. Everybody expects more and more performance, but a lot of the elements within the SOC technology aren't improving, so bandwidth increases are rather modest because, again, that links to the power problem that we have. So we have to focus there on our architecture. How can we bring the usage of bandwidth down within the design? Now, the big benefit we have there is because we have tile-based deferred rendering architecture, we already have very big advantages there. So being tile-based means that we try to keep as much of the processing on chip by splitting the scene up into tile zones and then processing each tile on chip before doing a single write-out to memory. But much more critical in that is also the deferred rendering part of the design. And that means we process all the depth information before we hand that over to the actual rasterization, the actual determining of the color of each pixel within a tile. When people see our cores, our roadmaps, the flexibility of the architecture, and most importantly, the fact that all of the software drivers are done by us across all the operating systems, and they're all very stable and mature, it means the bring up times, for example, of our cores, compared to our competition, we believe, are, are, are reasons why a lot of our licenses have seen a lot of success using our cores and therefore they keep coming back to us because what we say is what we deliver and I think that ability to not only deliver great technology that's class leading in all the performance metrics but we deliver a solution that you can get to production and get to volumes of tens of millions of units uh, or hundreds of millions of units in some cases is, is the reasons all feeding into why the power of the architecture is, is the architecture of choice we believe.